Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in our F-14B and we're looking at our artificial intelligence crew members. We've got Jester and Iceman. So the F-14 is an incredibly complex machine to fly and it has to have two crew members to fly it. Otherwise, it simply can't be operated. Now, if you're like me and you don't have any friends, then you can only occupy one seat, in which case an AI character is going to have to occupy the other seat. Usually, you would want to be the front pilot, and therefore, we're going to have to use a guy called AI Jester to do the Rio stuff in the back, and he can operate about 95% of the Rio commands in the back. And vice versa, if we want to be the Rio for a little bit, we can have a guy called Iceman, an AI guy, to drive the plane. We give these AI characters commands through a graphical pedal selection system, which we'll, we'll have a look at in the game in a minute. We can drive the pedal system via our head tracker or VR. That's the normal way to do it. We can also use keyboard commands and or joystick commands to help out, or we can use them completely if we don't have head tracking. Before we go and have a look at it, we'll just have a quick look at master options that we have. So from the main menu to options, going to go to special, going to go to F14, and we've got some gesture control here. Use head movement in order to select the items or the pedals in the gesture menu. You'll, As long as you've got some sort of head tracking, then yes, you'll obviously want that. You've got a master option here to stop the gesture calling out landings if you want. It's a big thing for him calling out landings, which can be a real pain in the butt. We've got a master option here to automatically switch between a pulse stopper lock to a simple pulse lock when going into visual range. And so it'll automatically be done without us having to tell him to do that. We've got that there. And just a menu camera. Uh, this is just a graphical thing in the middle of the graphical pedal system. Do you want a picture of him and his head there or do you not want that there? Okay, so next we'll go and jump in the cockpit and have a look at it. Okay, so we're in the cockpit now. Now the first thing we're going to do is look at the controls as ever. So if we are the pilot and we want, want to talk to Jester, we've got the Jester bindable commands down here. So we go down to Jester AI. Now these are not all the commands because there are literally hundreds of commands that we can give to Jester. But these are some of the ones that we might want on tap because we're going to use them a lot or we're going to need them kind of in an emergency. So, for instance, check. That's just saying, you know, a firm Roger to him. You don't want to have to press that every time by the visual system. So we can bind that. Also, regards navigating the Jester visual system, which we'll go through in a minute. We can, as well as using our head tracker, we can use these basic commands, left control and one, all the way up to left control eight. And we can change that to our HOTAS or our keyboard. And we've got kind of the same thing down here from just a menu down to just a menu upright, which we can bind to keys or our joystick. Loud and clear, so it's a bit like check. Something we'll have to say quite a lot. We've got some navigation commands here that we're going to probably use quite a lot, so you may want to bind them. And in an emergency, in a fight, you're going to want brake lock. You're going to want to toggle PDT pulse doppler to pulse STT lock. We want to do that in a hurry, no doubt, because we'll be in visual range of a target probably. And we've got radar vertical scan high and vertical scan low, which we'll probably need to get to if we're in a, in a hurry. And then the main menu, the main way of activating the visual menu is this toggle menu here. It's uh, A as standard and you can bind it like how I have done to a HODES command. Now as well, if you're going to fly as the Rio, then we have Iceman down here. And we've just got essentially the same thing the, to toggle the menu there. I need to set that up. And we've got the left control one through to eight or the different pedal commands on the graphical menu. And we can change them to your HOTAS if you want as well. Okay, so we're going to press A on our keyboard to bring the graphical menu up. The first thing to point out is that we get a main menu where we can select all of the commands and then we get sub menu. So based on the condition that we are in at the moment, i.e. whether we're on the runway, whether we're on an approach to an aircraft carrier, when we're in a dogfight, we'll decide which sub menu it automatically comes up with when you load it up. So it's come up with this sub menu here. If we went to want to get back to the main menu, then our head tracking line, which is this one here, we want to have it in roughly in the middle of Jester and press A again and then we get back to the main menu. From here we can access anything we want. And then if we press A again, it disappears. So A, sub menu, main menu, and we can choose whatever we want from here. Now we're gonna do videos going over in all of these pedals, all of these groups in detail. So we're not gonna look at it now, but just to show roughly how it works. If we wanted to access our radio, we would move our head tracker up and that is our head tracking line there. So we've got that pedal selected, then we will press A again. And then we can do a command. So let's say I want to tune the 
arc 182 uh, radio manually tune manual and now I'm going to have to enter some digits I want one two and I'm pressing A to enter the actual number three point four five zero Roger that. And you can see he's tuning the ARC-182 now to whatever we set there. So that's how we would actually do it. And like I said, we'll go over all of those groups in more detail. Now when dealing with Jester, it's important to realise that he's quite highly modelled. So he's programmed to have all the restrictions of a normal human. So for instance, when we get into air-to-air -air with Jester, he's going to be looking out for targets for us. But his line of sight is limited as per his model. So he can't, you know, see through my seat and he can't see through parts of the aircraft that are not the canopy. And as well as that, when he's working things, when he's pushing buttons and turning dials and stuff like that, the button presses and dials that he does are actually modelled. So, for instance, if he set a bunch of stuff in the rear cockpit up and then a human jumped into the rear seat to replace AI Jester, you'd see that all those buttons have been set as he set them. If that human then went and changed those switches and knobs and we put Jester back and then left and we put Jester back in that seat then those knobs would be left as the human left them and that's he'll, how he'll work with them uh, until he's told differently. Now the next thing I want to very quickly show is that he can be proactive in the startup of the aircraft so we'll go and get a cold started aircraft now. So we're in a cold started plane now and we can go ahead and start it up ourselves, follow the procedure if we like or we can get AI Jester to help us. So we we'll press A again we can use a startup or an assisted startup. So, assisted startup is going to help us even more. So, we'll try that first. There is still no external air and power. So, he's telling us we need to put external air and power. Well, to do that, I'm going to press the comms menu, and that is that one there. Comms menu, ground crew, ground power, on. Chief, turn on the ground power. Copy. And same thing for the air supply. Ground power is now on. Ground air supply. Copy. Ground air supply is now connected. Okay, so now we're going to contact him again for more orders. So, A button, assisted start. Roger that. ICS com check. So he's asking us to do an ICS, an intercommunications com check. So the way I'd respond for that is loud and clear. Roger. All right, you ready? All right, check landing gear indication extended and transition line off. So he wants us to check that these wheels are showing the symbols as they are and the transition light for the hydraulics is off, which it is. So we're good to go. We'll give him the loud and clear or the check. So A, check. Select LTS on master test switch and verify all lights illuminate. So we're going to right click on this switch. We're going to turn it once with left click to LTS. Right click again. Check that the lights illuminate. And everything is illuminated, which is nice. And we are going to now A again and check it with him. Select fire DET EXT on master test selector and verify left and right fire go lights illuminate. Okay, so fire, DET, right click up, left click around, right click down, check the fire lights illuminate, there they are, they're illuminating, yes, gonna check. Next, select INST on master test selector and verify that engine, fuel, wing sweep and alpha instruments are working. Okay, so you get the idea. We're gonna we're gonna go through every single item here, and you'll notice how he's got these helpful boxes that uh, show us where the items are that he wanted. So that's that. Now we're going to try the normal startup method. Okay, and then we have the non-assisted start. So we're going to go startup. Uh, we have no external air and power. Okay, same thing. Ground air supply is now connected. Okay, so now Jester is just going to go and do his start because he's got his cockpit to start up, and he's going to expect us to get on and do all the checks and all the startup on our own for the front cockpit. ICS com check. Mm, now I'm clear. Roger. You can hear him pressing his buttons as he starts to do his uh, start procedure. On the ejection seat. And you'll notice that, although he's not going to tell me exactly what to do, he could see that I'd forgotten to arm my ejection Closing seat. Closing canopy. Check. Anyway, we'll go through that fully uh, when we do the startup video, but that's all I want to show you for there. Next. Ready to start. Next, we'll go show, you, show using Iceman. So I'm going to jump in an air start. Okay, so we're in an air-started aircraft now. I'm the pilot at the moment, but I want to do, do some Rio stuff. So I'm going to press 2 to get to the rear 
cockpit and Iceman is going to take over flying now and I can give him commands so if I press A again I can tell him to hold the current attitude I can ask for a relative heading relative to our current heading an absolute heading relative of north zero zero set a certain speed IAS set a certain altitude relative to our current altitude set a absolute altitude so that set an absolute altitude of uh, what have we got uh, 15,000 feet barometric I'm on it. up he goes and um, if I want to set a relative heading uh, say 20 degrees right of what we are at the moment then relative heading uh, sorry I can't do 20 degrees can I I'm gonna do 30 degrees to the right I'm on it off he goes and he's gonna choose that heading and I want a speed so this is going to be relative in this case so set speed and what are we at the moment we are at 350 knots I want to go 450 knots so so 100 extra indicated airspeed copy burners on off we go so that's just a nice little feature for when we come and do our Rio stuff right so that was just a very basic introduction to the AI Jester and Iceman we're now going to go into a bit more detail on other videos I hope that helps and see you later